Hello everyone, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. And I feel like I got a whisper because the bears are all asleep. <laughs> Anyways, today in this tutorial we're going to make these sleepy time bears. I used the Bernat Forever Fleece Finer yarn for the bodies and the Baby Delight by Loops and Thread for the beanies. We use uh, the 46 needle Addy machine and I also use the 22 needle. Now if you only have the 48 needle centro uh, machine, I'm sure you can you can uh, make the bear just follow the exact same pattern that I'm doing here and, and uh, it might be just a little bit wider you might need a little bit more stuffing but otherwise it should be perfect just like this so um, come along with me and we're going to make these adorable sleepy time bears okay once you get your stuff ready join me back Okay, if you're ready to begin, then let's get started. Um, I'm going to move my last white needle and my first black needle in line with my yarn guide. Um, go ahead and take a permanent black marker if you have one and mark that red peg that's between those two needles. You won't regret it, trust me. It's the best decision that you can make on your machine um, because you always know when your end of your row is coming up and, and you just never, rarely will go past it. So we're gonna do a long tail cast on. Cast on. So put your tail in the, in the middle of your machine and then you're going to go behind that first black one, in front of the next black one, behind and in front, all the way around your machine, okay? Just like so. And then when you get to about halfway around, if you're like me, you're gonna switch your, yarn, your row counter to zero because I like it to be ready for when I get started. And then I'm gonna continue around. Okay, so I'm almost at the end. I see that black marked um, divider coming around. I'm going to open my yarn guide. I'm going to put my yarn in there and I'm going to shut my latch there. Then I hold my yarn just between my fingers, just like, like so. Um, see if I can get you in the camera here. Just like so. And I don't put any pressure on it. I just hold it so that way I can feel if there's knots coming through or if, if I'm not really paying attention and there's an end that's coming up, <laughs> then, um, then I, uh, I always can feel it with my hand. So for this project, very little tension next to none. Just, just hold it and let it slip through your fingers. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to knit 100 rows, okay? I start out slow with this, um, with this particular yarn because because it's so soft I find that it it gets very um, staticky so I pull out quite a bit of yarn from my from my ball so I make sure that I have enough in line there see there's a, a knot in my ball of yarn there we go easy to fix but if I didn't have it in my fingers I wouldn't have caught it so quickly so then I'm gonna keep going I can I can speed up once I once I know that it's on there securely then I can speed up and I'm going to knit 100 rows this project knits up very quickly if you have no problem with tuck stitches or whatnot so um, go ahead and crank out your 100 rows when you get to about 50 or 60 rows and you find that your um, your project is touching your table make sure that you stop and you and you roll it up into a donut so that you can have even tension around your barrel here um, if you don't do that and it starts to lift like this you're going to risk uh, dropping your stitches or tucking your, dropping your stitches in that case so um, make sure that that you you stop and roll that up so when i get to about row 60 um, or 55 whenever my my project is touching the table i'm going to stop and i'm going to roll it up and I'll, I'll be back with you then so um keep cranking and if you need to see that part then then um when 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 your project starts to touch the table come back and and uh you'll see how i take care of that little problem okay okay i thought i would stop there i'm at row 61 and my project is getting close to the table, but I thought I would stop because if it touches the table, and it's, I'll just thought I would show you better. And it um, it starts to gather on the table, then it starts to pull up there. And then, then when you get your looseness there, that's like I said before, when you get your tucked stitches um, and uneven tension. So you, you want to have even tension all the time. So you're going to take that up from the bottom and you're going to just roll it into a donut. 
And if you're doing like a long scarf and you've got like 300 rows um, or, you know, a blank, an Afghan blanket um, that you're, you're working on with a lot more rows, then, then this is what you do as well, of course. But then as it goes part way down, and I usually then when it gets to about halfway down, we'll, we'll just keep rolling. And, and then you've, you end up with this huge thick donut at the top of your project, but it gives you wonderful tension on your stitches. Um, around the rim of your barrel there. So um, that's what I do when my project starts to get longer. So I'm on row 61. I'm going to continue till I get to row 100 and then I'll meet you back. Hope you're having fun. Okay, I'm on row 97. I've rolled my donut up a little higher. This is clicking on 98, which means I've got to finish that row. Then we're gonna go 99. That's why I like to set my counter before I start so that I, I know what row I'm working on. This is 100, so I've got to finish that row. Okay, so I'm coming up. I see this black marked divider coming around, so I know I'm at the end of my row. I'm going to go ahead and cut off a long tail for my long tail cast off. Long meaning a foot, um, foot and a half, whatever you're comfortable with. See how staticky that is? So I'm going to actually give that a spray because I don't want that to uh, start snagging on my stitches and get a, a drop stitch. So um, I use a spray bottle to, to uh, stop the static and I actually just put a, a video up on that. Um, so you can go ahead and look for that and see the little tip that I do with that. But I'm gonna just go around, turn your crank until you get needle number one, go underneath it with your needle, your threaded needle. Then I'm gonna take number two. I do three, four or five, somewhere in there. Stitches before I start cranking my barrel further around. I, like I say in most videos, I'm just too scared to drop stitches. So I'd rather go a little bit slower and, uh, and prevent that problem than to un unravel my whole, like go around the whole circle and have them all loose before I take them off. Because if I'm when I'm taking this stitch off, I risk these ones falling off. So be careful. Um, some people can, can wind their whole barrel and, and just go to town and take all 46 off. And I, I wish I was brave enough to do that. <laughs> I, I just am not. I don't, um, I mean, this doesn't take too much extra time either, but it's just how I prefer to do it. So you just do it however you want to do it. Now, if you have decided to use this Forever Fleece Finer Yarn, which is what um, I'm using here, then you, you uh, make sure that when you... Pull your drawstring here to tighten the ends, which we're going to do a little bit later. Um, I'm gonna we're going to work on the ears first. But when you when you pull on this, you have to be like when I say extremely careful, I can't exaggerate that enough because it it just breaks so so easily. Once your project is together using this yarn, and I've done a blanket in this yarn too, a baby blanket is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, once your project is together and all your stitches are in line, it gives, it's, it, you know, it has strength then, and, and you don't have to worry about it, um, the, the different strands breaking. Okay. It's like the links in a chain, I guess, when you have one link is weak and you got all the little, all the other, link, you have a longer chain then the links are all supporting each other. And so then it's not as weak. So that's much the same as this. So when we go to close these ends, we have to be very, very careful, but, um, I'll remind you of that when we get to there. But for now, what I want you to do is the exact same thing that we just did, but on your Addy 22 machine. So, um, go ahead and do a long tail cast on, on your Addy 22, uh, knit yourself 12 rows, then do a long tail cast off, exactly what we just did for this body part, um, but we're making the ears now. So 12 rows, long tail cast off, remove it, and make two of those. Again, long tail cast on, 12 rows, long tail cast off on your Addy 22. Okay, so go ahead and make two of those, and then when you're done that, come back and we will assemble, okay? Just a quick um, tip here when you are, are doing your ears. Uh, make sure you leave a good tail on the inside, at least on one end, either the inside of your project or the outside of your pro the end of your project. Um, I always just leave a little bit longer than I think I need on the, on the beginning of my project because we're going to need it to sew the ears onto our bear. Um, so just uh, I thought I would pop on really quick just to give you that little tip, okay? We'll see you soon. Okay, we've got our body done and our ears done, but before we assemble the ears, we're gonna go ahead and, and close our body. Okay, so I've stretched out my material in all directions, lengthwise and widthwise. Now I'm going to take the one end, I'm gonna close it up essentially 
just like a beanie. But if you, again, and I'll mention it in every section of this video, I'm sure, if you um, are using fleece finer, be very gentle with it because, oh my goodness, it just breaks. I, I have had it happen because I've made quite a number of these bears by, already and and um, I love this yarn for them and, and, uh, and I have broken this piece of yarn by pulling too hard. So generally for my, for my beanies, when I use regular weight, or regular yarn that's, that's not so fine, um, I will go around two or three times to close my beanie just because it, it secures it more. Um, and for here, I'm, I'm going to, I'm gonna go around twice, okay? So again, being very, very gentle as to how you do that, but I'm going to just pick up those end stitches all the way around and gently pull as I do so, okay? So go ahead and do that. Go around, go around um, twice, and then let me just uh, give this a turn. And then when you get that nice and gently, by by snugly or by gently pulling that closed, once you get it closed, you're going to stick your needle into the middle of that circle. Put your hand through. Grab that needle once it's closed. Grab that needle. Hold the end of it with your hand so you don't snag, snag your material, and bring that end through to this next end. And then you're going to cinch this one closed the exact same way. Um, it, looks like a, it looks like a beautiful little beanie here and you can use that for a beanie actually for a bonfire beanie, but we're making it into a bear. <laughs> so you're gonna cinch that very carefully closed together. Then you're gonna pull the two ends tight. Um, and then I'll show you where you go from there, okay? I've got both ends secured and I've got um, it knotted off at the top there and I just want to make a mention too that you don't have to worry about getting this hole completely closed like you would in a normal beanie um, because you're going to put your hat over top this is your head and you're going to put your 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 beanie over top of this and I sew my beanies down onto my my bears I don't just leave them on loosely um, if you leave them on loosely you're going to want to um, want to make that um, tighter but but for this project I'd encourage you to sew it down like what I'm going to do later because um, you know the kids with handling it it's just gonna keep falling off anyways and they're not gonna put them on properly so the look of the bear is the nicest when you sew it down so go ahead and finish that and then you're going to tuck in your ends in between the two layers and cut it off now we're going to go ahead and assemble the ears. I'll show you how to do that um, and we'll be back with you. Now that we've got our ears done, we're going to stretch them out like we do every other project we take off our machine in both directions. Then we're going to go to one end. And again, I cannot stress, I cannot stress it enough if you're using this Forever Fleece Finer yarn um, that you are ever, ever, ever so gentle when you tug it. Again, it's very strong and sturdy here, but when you're using with one strand, you will break it if you give it the normal tug that you do on your regular yarn, okay? Then we're gonna pull that one end, we're going to go around, and we're going to close this end like we would a beanie. This is exactly what you're going to do with the beanie that we're doing in, in the next project. We're going to sew, or in, in the next part of this video, we're going to sew our end closed like this. Then I'm going to just take a look, make a little knot there. See, I am just being so gentle that it's just unbelievable. <laughs> I'm gonna stick my needle through that center and I'm gonna take it through to the other side. Pull on it just a little bit so that the knot comes um, through with it so that uh, I have a beautiful finished edge there. Not that it really matters in this part because you're not gonna see it anyways because we're gonna fold this, but for your beanie it does matter. Then we're going to cinch up the other end. This is what you're going to do with your with the beanie that we're, with, that we're making next, okay? You're going to cinch up both ends. Only thing is with the beanie, of course, it's a lot more rows and you'll be able to form it into a beanie after this. You can't because it's it's going to be formed into an ear, but same concept, okay? So we're gonna go around. Tuck it 
tighten up that end. Okay, so I went around one full time. There we go. I'm going to tie a knot. Again, being very, very careful if you're using this yarn. Okay, and so we've got a nice circle there. Now, I, I do mention later on in the video too, if you're not a crocheter and you can't crochet the snout, then this might be all you need to do. Do this with white yarn and then um, fold it in half like that, tie your ends together, you get a flat pancake kind of thing and you're gonna use that as your as your snout, okay? Um, but I'm gonna crochet one. Then I'm going to, going to stick my needle in there. I'm going to bring it up, one of those ends up through the side, okay? The other one, I'm going to just snip off, make it shorter. That's gonna get hidden inside of there. And then I'm going to fold this in half, just like so, so that my, my end is at the corner there. And I'm going to just, uh, I think this is called a whip stitch. Whip stitch, it, whip stitch it closed, okay? Going through every space that's there. The, between the two, the two bars there, I'm gonna pick up and and uh, just sew it closed. Okay, I'm gonna do that all the way around to the end and that will form my little ear for my little sleepy time koala bear. Um, and you're gonna do that with both ears and then I'll see you back, okay? The next part that we're going to need is our little beanie. Okay, aren't they just so cute? Now I um, use just a three weight yarn for this. Uh, and you can, you know what, for, for this bear project, you can use whatever yarn you want. You can use the same one that you used for the body, um, but I like to choose a, a solid color um, or a color that's inside of the, the, uh, the body of the bear that I'm gonna make. Here's one that, that I've started and I haven't assembled yet. I've got the, the ears here and I've got the, uh, the beanie made. Um, and I, I just chose the yellow. And I had to go with a different um, yarn because I didn't have um, any left in this, in this yellow in the Forever Fleece Finer. So whatever you want, you have that coordinates, that's what you're gonna do. And you're going to use your Addy King again, um, or your Centro 40, um, if you have it. The first number of bears that I made, I used my Addy King to make these little hats. Um, but this one I made on my Centro 40. Um, and, and I just, uh, oh, my pom pom's a little off centered, but I'm gonna have to fix that. So whichever one you choose to use works totally fine. Your, your Addy 48 or your Centro 40 needle machine. And you're going to do 60 rows for your beanie. Now I'm choosing not to do this again on the video because it's the exact same technique as we just did the um, bare body and the ears. And it just takes up so much room on a video. So um, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do the long tail cast on. Then you're going to um, knit 60 rows. Then you're gonna do the long tail cast off. And once you have it off your machine, I switched back to the white because that's the one we're using for this project. Once you um, have it off your machine, you're going to cinch it closed together just like we did the body of the bear um, to make a beanie. Okay, so it's exact same technique. Close both ends, then cinch them together up at the top. Um, bring them closely together. And then you're going to make a little tiny pom-pom. <laughs> um, and I have a video on my channel on how to make a perfect little pom-pom, so you can go ahead and look that up. And uh, and then you've now you've got your your beanie um, made for your bear. So um, from here, we're gonna go ahead and, and we're going to um, move on to the next part. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stuff the body. Um, I think sometimes we have a tendency to overstuff. We feel it's gotta be like just really plump and full, but I'm just gonna put it in there nice and lightly like that, grab another bunch and I'm not pushing hard I'm not pushing out against the sides I'm just I'm just stuffing okay just stuff it in nice and lightly and loosely because you want your bear to be soft you don't want them to be a hard ball okay now I'm going to just make sure that that goes up to the top there I'm not really pushing hard I'm just forming okay the head really okay so now I've got it's nice and cushy. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. How I gauge is, is when I put it in there um, gently, really, and then push down a little bit, I want to have enough stuffing in there that it comes to the very edge. 
without without packing, but just lightly, lightly placing it in there. Okay, so here we go. Now, if I'm gonna pretend that that's closed, let's just see. I think that's enough. Okay, so when it when you when you push it down just gently and then it starts to just peek out the end like that, then you know you have enough. Okay, it's nice and rounded. You're gonna grab your your needle and your thread. Now, if you're using Forever Fleece Finer, then I would suggest that you um, double strand it just for some some security. Okay, so you're gonna pick the base of your of your project. You're gonna go underneath along the rim there, and go across four or five stitches. Come up. Leave a tail on that end. Then I just um, skip a stitch here, and then go down and do the same thing. And the reason why I come up is it so it so that it has something to pull on when it's gathering. Okay, so then I'm going to go just down, miss one stitch, and go down, and then come across again. Go down. Oops, am I going off camera? So sorry. Come across. All the way around and that's how we're gonna close the other end okay one more time down and through and come up right beside that other one but not in the same space because we want to tie it and have it secure okay so then we're going to gently pull that together Stuff that in a little bit. I'm gonna tie it. And then again, I'm not gonna to pull too hard because it will break. And then I'm gonna tie a knot. And then if I don't like how the hole is there, I'm gonna go around and reinforce it. And for me, I don't like it. I need it to be a little bit farther closed. So I'm just gonna take one strand of yarn here and I'm just gonna feed it underneath these stitches and I don't have to catch every stitch I just want to catch a few just so that I can I can um, pull that a little bit closer okay all right here we go a couple more gently pull on it and you see how that's tightening okay I find that's enough so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie another knot and that's going to even tighten it a little bit more Okay, so I've got my end secured. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to hide all these ends. Now that we've got our project stuffed, we're going to separate the head from the body. So I don't count stitches on this. I just eyeball it. So I'm going to eyeball about halfway and then I'm going to go up just a tiny bit, maybe two rows. Um, just so my head is a little tiny bit shorter than my body. And then I'm going to take my um, needle that's threaded with my yarn and I'm going to go weave in and out around the body skipping every other row okay and you try to eyeball it now when you got a pattern on your on your uh yarn like this it's hard to, to stay consistent with the same row because your eye wants to travel with the with the pattern um so when, when you have just a solid color it's easier to see where the row and follow the same row but for me i'm just eyeballing it i'm going to just turn this to see where i'm at here Eyeball it, see if I'm on the straight and narrow. See, I've gone up just a little bit, so I'm gonna come down. When you're gathering like this, honestly, trust me, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna work out great, as long as you're not like three and four stitches higher or lower. You can just pick it up and come back. So here we go. I'm pretty much on the straight and narrow. I'm not going in through the, through the stuffing on this part. Um, that's not necessary. You just wanna go underneath the, the two layers of of the body here. Okay, so almost done. I could have used a little bit longer thread, but I'm gonna make this work. I tend to do that. I always cut a little short. <laughs> if I'm gonna cut short or long, it's always gonna be short, okay? And then you come up here, and then I'm gonna just pull on it. Well, I'm gonna give it a little tie first, and then I'm gonna pull on it a bit. And I don't want it like I think that's good. You don't want it. You don't want to get it as tight as you can get it. You just want it to be, to form the head, um, and and you know really in your mind a little looser than than tight. Okay, if you have to to figure it out in those terms. Now I'm going to grab one more piece of yarn. Here, 
because I always reinforce it, I go around twice. Um, and then I try, I'll show you here once I get my yarn off this ball. I'm nearly at the end of this ball, which is, um, you know yourself when you're at the end of a ball, that's when you start to get a little bit of the knots happening. But we got it good here. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce that, go around twice. I do it even when I'm using yarn that's not this, this weight, um, easily breakable. But I'm going to try to go underneath the dips there, or close to it, and over the ridges. Okay? You'll see that there's ridges there from where, where I am. Um, did it last time. So you don't even have to go every other one like I did um, on the first row. You're just going to, to eyeball it. See, so now I'm going to, this one I'm going to have to go under because the other one's too tight. And then over. Not going into the dips of every one because it's too hard to do, but on some that you can and then, and then just go around. Try to get some of those ridges um, underneath the yarn strands this time and then you won't see them. Okay? So just do the best that you can following that same pattern. Okay, so keep doing that until you get all the way around. My knots aren't in the same place have you, if you've noticed that too. My first row ended here and I'm going to end my other row over there just so I don't have a big knot in my that's noticeable in my project. Okay, all right, I was going to go off camera, but I'm almost done. So I'm going to just stay with you. Get this done. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and tie this one. Just so it goes a little bit tighter than the first one did, not much. And then I'm going to hide those strands and then we'll we'll carry on. So I'll meet you back when we're when we're done that. Now that we've got our head and our body formed, looks great. We're going to start attach we're going to attach our ears. So what I do for that is I, I go to the top and I find I find a row where I can count the stitches quite easily. And often that's um on the ridge, sometimes it's uh, yeah, well, it's usually on the ridge. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. I go down four stitches, but then I'm gonna move it over and I'm going to go between those ridges and I'm gonna put my, I just find I get a better hold. I'm gonna going to insert my needle underneath those two layers and I'm going to start sewing on my, my ear. Okay, following down the same row and I pick up about a row and a half and I also want you uh, to tell you that I actually try to go through some of the stuffing because then I think um, that it, it holds easier too and when your ear is on and the kids are pulling on it it's this isn't going to keep stretching like this as badly because because you've got um, some more reinforcement in there with the um, with the stuffing so that's just a little tip that I uh, follow and that I do okay so we're going to keep going all the way down and when you get When you get to the end, don't fasten off. When I get to the end of my ear, my, my um, first ear, I just leave my, my tail hanging like this until I get the second ear on because more often than not, if you've put ears on different things, you like to, you think, oh man, one's higher than the other or one's a um, little too far back or whatever your reason is. If you tie this off, then it's torture to try to undo undo it once you've hidden everything. So I always bring it down until I've got, um, got it at the end, then I let my tail hang and then I place my second one. And so to show you where I place my second one is I follow it down four rows as well. One, two, three, four, or you can kind of eyeball that one don't put it straight across. I find that's too far back. If that's the front, that's too far back. And, and both sides are the same if, um, if you do it that way. But I follow it to the, my fourth, the fourth row down, and then I bring it up forward about three rows, okay? So that when you're looking at it from the front, there's less space between the ears than what's in the back. I think that's more normal, okay? So less space in the front than what's in the back. So again, into the middle, then move it across about three rows. And that's perfect placement for your ear. And then you go ahead and you, you um, sew that one on too and then I'll meet you back. Okay, we've got our two ears on. 
they look great and I went ahead and I put the face on because you know just to show you how to crochet this circle and to put the face on takes 20 minutes in a video so I've gone ahead and I've done a separate video on that because I need this this part of the face in particular um, for for different things like I, I have it on the cuddle bear like I said and I have it on on um, beanie um, and it's the same thing and so rather than put it on every video of different um, that, I, that I need it on um, I went ahead and I made an, a video just on this so if you don't know how to crochet, um, I've, I taught you how to, to do the circle and that. And and, um, and and then I showed you how to, to put it on and where to place it. So you can go ahead and look up that video on my channel. And it'll help you um, put this on. Centering it um, between the ears, of course, and just a little bit up from the neck. But the eyes on the video were just this part. Okay, one line here. And the other one came down like this too, and you'll see that. Um, but for this one, you're going to go... Up to like I, I want to cross three bars, so I'm going to move this up just one right here. So one, two, three. That's how I how I judge how why to do this. So I go three bars, then I go over three, and then up three. Oops, did I go off camera? So down three, over three. And up three that's how I judge how to do these sleepy eyes okay so then you go ahead and, and you do that um, and place those where they look good and then the next part we're gonna do is to make the feet and the arms okay you've got your your needle threaded and um, I like to do the face before I do the, the feet and the arms because I like to line the feet up with this part of the nose here um, so I just follow it down and you know where about center is, and then you, you tip your bear upside down and you go through the bottom just like this. Okay, and then I leave a bit of a tail on this end, enough for, enough for tucking, and then I'm gonna tie a knot. Just because I need it to be secure before I start. So I've got my knot tied, that's gonna just hang out there until I'm done. So following down my the middle there, I'm just gonna go across, poke it through, I always stick my finger in the middle here just because I want to see where my line is. And if I hide that, I can't see where my line is because I'm using the same yarn, okay? And then I'm going to come to the front. I'm following that up. Poke it through and all the way to the back. Oops, sorry. Went off camera again. So poke it through and all the way to the back. Stick my finger in there. I don't cinch it up until I'm quite a bit further down, okay? Then I'm going to go up again. Follow that up and I'm gonna go about halfway so um, between here and here about halfway I'm gonna just go one more time through all the way to the other side and then when you do that you pull both ends be careful with this yarn because again it doesn't cooperate very well so there you go You've got uh, your legs just like, just created just like that. So now what you want to do is you're going to hide your ends, okay? So once you're, you have that positioned where you like it, um, I might have gone a little bit lower. Maybe not. Once I get my hands on them. No, I think I, I will like that. So now what you're going to do now that you've pulled it nice and snug, you're going to thread your needle again. And I just come down again. So I just go through to the other side. And come down till I meet till I meet this string, tie a knot, and then hide them. Okay, so go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. Okay, so we've got our legs done. Now we're gonna do the arms. So to do the arms, you're gonna turn your bear on its side. You're gonna find the corner of the ear and you're gonna come down. Now you're going to we're gonna make these really, really wide um, because we want a chunky arm. But for now, we're just going to go maybe an inch on either side of the ear up into the neck, just to, to start our project, okay? Leave a tail there, then I turn it around that way. Then you're going to eyeball like 10 rows or so, one, 10 full rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 stitches, I should say. 10 stitches in between. Go down, grab some stuffing so it's a, like a chunky arm and go through. Again, I, I leave a loop there so I can see where my line is again that I'm following, okay? Then I'm gonna go down again, get underneath that stuffing come up in about the same place as that other one. Okay, I'm gonna leave a little loop there again so I can follow my guide. Where's the other end of this thing? There we go. 
Well, that one pulled in a little bit because I had to find my end, but that's okay. And then I'm going to go down again, maybe a little tiny bit wider, just a little bit wider for the middle stitches. Go down. Now I want to come in line with the top of the legs here, okay? So this is where, where the top is, and I'm almost there. I'm going to go actually a little bit below, just a tiny wee bit below. Then come up. Pull that through, then I'm going to take both of my yarn ends. Where's the other one? Both of my yarn ends, and I'm going to pull. Okay, so you made it a little bit wider as you were going down in the middle there, okay? And so there's my arm. And now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up. So from the back, I'm going to follow it up. Until I get to the top, I'm going to tie it off and hide it. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you back. Okay, congratulations. You um, have completed the body of your bear. And I'm laughing because this one looks a little strange. <laughs> He's probably the strangest looking one out of all of ones that I made. And I think that's because I probably should have put the head a little bit farther up. Maybe another two rows um, so that the body was bigger. So I'll uh, give this to, to my little um, granddaughter and, and uh, save the rest for... <laughs> for craft sales it just makes me laugh but then on the same hand these things are are all unique so um he's got a short body and we're all made differently so i guess uh, i just had to laugh it made me fun uh, these little guys giving me a you know <laughs> a, a good chuckle but anyways now we're going to put the hat on so you're going to take your your beanie and you're going to line it up with the very top of the ear there then it's going to come down and you're going to cover up that first little part of the eye that you've got so that you have only two pieces showing. Then you're gonna just fold this over a little bit like that. This comes right down to between the neck and the arm, just like that. You're going to lightly sew that on right right across so that you, you hide your yarn. So it, if, like for me, I'll use my white yarn and I'm gonna sew this on um, and do it really close to the edge there so you don't, you don't see that. Tack it down, then you come around to the back and you push this down ever so slightly. Don't push it down too far, and I'll tell you why. Because you need to make sure that when you got this up here that you have enough slack to bend this over here. And then you're going to just put a stitch right through all like this, all this layers into the bear, and you can bring it out the back and tie a knot and, and hide your hide your um your yarn ends from there. Or you can just leave it like that. But I, I think Sleepy Time Berry's gotta have this kind of over like that. So you go ahead and sew that on and you've got your beautiful little bear. Um, no matter how he looks, he's going to be adorable. So thank you for joining me on this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have fun making um, some bears of your very own and to, to give away as gifts or to put in your sails or just for the pleasure of making one for yourself. Put it on your bed and have fun looking at it. Okay, so thanks a lot for joining me. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I'd appreciate that very much. Um, be on the lookout for um, a little blanket that's going to go. I'm going to make a blanket for these, um, for these bears. Uh, you know, as a little accessory to go with it. So that'll be coming in the near future. I've got a few other things to do first, but um, go ahead and uh, make yourself a bear and enjoy. Thanks, my friends. Take care. Have a great day.